This is why you will never learn the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. So, how are you doing? How do you sleep? Yeah, I don't feel too well, man. Well, you slept like seven, seven, eight hours. You shouldn't feel like that. I think it's is that you sleep so late, so you don't, your body doesn't rest well, instead of sleeping right after Isha, you know? Actually, I had a lot of stuff to do, but... Yeah, I don't feel, I don't feel like, like doing it today because I feel a little... Bro, you said that yesterday, bro. Come on. Yeah, but what, what can I do if I don't feel well? It's difficult to work like this. Yeah, maybe if you stop being on your phone, before going to sleep and stop eating like a pig and actually focus on getting better. What do you say? Huh? What do you say? I ain't say nah. I was just talking to myself. But yeah, man, I think, uh, I think you should uh, get your life together, you know? Yeah. So if, if Allah is not helping me, how he's helping you, how, how is that my fault? In my 10 years of experience learning the Arabic language, I have realized that it's never about what everybody focuses. It's always about these three things that I will share with you that, Wallahi, I assure you and guarantee you that if you apply them in your life, not only it will help you learn the Arabic language, but as well it will help you in other realms of your life. <laughs> why you will never learn the Arabic language. It is not because your parents never taught you. It's not because of where you live, it's the wrong place, uh, I can't find no programs. It's not because of the lack of courses out there. It's not because you can travel. It's simply you, my friend. My brother, my sister is in within you. The problem and the reason why you struggle is because you don't know how to plan. You don't know how to set your days. You don't know how to execute. You don't know how to regulate your life to become a more productive human being. Now let's forget for a moment everything that has to do with methods, books, teachers, programs, and let's focus on the elements that are really discussed not too often. And I will show you why the students at Andrews Institute, they are more efficient. These three things that I to talk about today is your habits, your health, and lastly, your mindset. Now, first of all, let's talk about your habits. And we are just going to focus on this because if you fix this, wallahi, if you fix this, everything else you realize like, oh wow, I'm becoming better at everything else just because I have fixed this thing. Now, this thing, my friends, is the phone, social media. But let's focus on the phone as a general aspect because some people are not on social media and they just get distracted with other things, whether it's with conversations with friends, whether it's with long three hour calls. Like I've seen people talk on a phone for 18 hours, literally just stopping to pray. And they've been talking for 18 hours. This happens, it's real. So let's talk about this phenomenon, the phone, and how to get rid of these bad habits that are created around it. Now your phone and constantly checking it, endless social media scrolling, you know, the fear of missing out on news, events. What is this saying? What is that saying? Who's saying what? Who's fighting who? It will not allow you to focus. It will distract you. It will cause anxiety. It will cause your thoughts to be scattered. And you have so much information you know, that your eyes are consuming, let alone the images, let alone, you know, all the fahsha and all the dislikable things that you see on social media. People just acting stupid. All of this, it affects your mind without you realizing it. And you can only realize it once you get rid of your phone for a serious period of time. I'm talking about at least 72 hours. Try it out. So amongst the best advice that I can give you, and it's a good example because my phone at the moment is locked. And it says that it will be unlocked in three hours and 29 minutes. And this box 
it literally has helped me immensely just because of the fact of not having the phone. But you won't know how beneficial this is until you try it. And then I have this one that has a hole here where I can pick up calls. And of course, I have set this system in a way where only certain people have this phone number. So when people call me, I can pick up the call and talk to them, but I cannot get distracted by picking up the phone. So one thing that I highly advise you, first of all, to create these good habits is lock your phone two hours before you go sleep. If you go sleep at 9 p.m., which you should after Aisha, lock it two hours before and have it logged for as many hours as you need to get work done. So for example, if you go to sleep at 9 p.m. and you wake up at 7, 8, you start your day at 7, 8, and you have things to do in the morning, calculate the amount of time that it would take you to finish those tasks and set the phone to be unlocked once you would be done with those tasks. And you will see that you will all of a sudden, you know, get things done. You, don't, you won't waste your time in the morning and you will go straight into your work. This is my first golden advice that has helped me tremendously in my life that I assure you and I guarantee you that inshallah if you apply it it will change a lot of things for you as well. Ibn Qadam al-Maqdisi said يَنْبَغِ لِطَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ قَطْعُ الْعَلَائِقَ الشَّاغِلَةِ فَإِنَّ الْفِكْرَةَ مَا تَتَوَزَّعَتْ قَصْرَتْ عَنْ إِدْرَاكِ الْحَقَائِقِ وَكَانَ السَّلَفُ يُؤْثِرُونَ الْعِلْمَ عَلَى كُلِّ شيء. It is necessary for the seeker of knowledge to get rid of all distractions. For when thoughts are scattered, they fall short of grasping truths. The predecessors used to prefer knowledge above all else. Meaning if something is in your life and you don't really need it to leave, you should prefer knowledge, you should prefer alertness of your brain above all of these other things. Okay, you will maybe miss a message on Instagram for a few hours. Oh, so bad. So you can't log your phone. If you already feel like scared of doing that, of course you are not learning Arabic. So lock your phone, get rid of people and cut people out. Cut things that distract you out. Could be people, could be apps, could be softwares. Anything that is distracting you, cut it out. And set the system, you know, stop talking to people, stop responding to people when they send you memes. So they see that you don't care about them. So they stop sending them to you. Stop responding to calls straight away. So people stop calling you and wasting your time. Stop responding to messages on WhatsApp so quickly. So people get used to you not being always available. And you will see all of a sudden, nobody cares about you. So when Ibn Qadama, he said that having scattered thoughts because of massive information consumption, having all of these thoughts scattered, it doesn't allow you to grasp truth in an easy way. Something, somebody tells you something so simple, huh? and you just can't grasp it. You, yeah, but like, what, like, all right, but wait, like, okay, repeat it. Uh, your brain, you slow. You are slow, my friend. You are slow because of everything you consume, of everything that's going on in your phone, scrolling, um, explore page, messages, bling, clung, clang, bling, clang, all of these notifications that are purposely made to trigger a part in your brain that when they come up, when you hear the sound, it triggers something in your body that pushes you to want to see what is it? What was that? The sound was so appealing to your brain. All of these things is people that sits down in a room and talk about how we can keep these people on these apps the most amount of time possible. So don't be a sheep. Don't fall for this. Don't fall for this. Fight your nafs. Don't give your nafs what he's asking you for of massive scrolling through social media. Get rid of all of these habits and you will see that everything else will come in a very easy way. The next thing is your health, your diet. Your diet directly impacts your mood and your cognitive function as well, your intelligence. And eating and consuming high fat foods can disrupt your sleep. So when your sleep is disrupted, you have mood disorders. So you wake up sluggish, you feel tired, your body is heavy. Now you don't feel like working out, of course. Now you don't feel like doing and getting things done. You don't feel like sitting down for one hour listening to a lesson, reading, 
doing homework, taking notes. So your diet and your gut is so important that sometimes doctors call it your second brain. Your gut is your second brain. How you treat your gut, it directly impacts on how you function on a daily basis, how active you are. Ibrahim ibn Adham, rahimahullah, he said, Man dabata batnahu dabata dinahu wa man malaka ju'ahu malaka al-akhlaq as-saliha. Whoever is able to control his stomach will be able to control his religion, meaning how he behaves towards his religion. Of course, how you know how you pray, how capable are you to abstain of doing haram, whether it's through your limbs, whether it's through your tongue, whether it's through your eyes, whether it's through your nafs, how you feel towards people. Do you feel hate? Do you feel jealousy? All of these things are caused because of how you control or how you are not able to control your gut, your stomach. And whoever is able to control his hunger will acquire good manners, the manners that are righteous. So all of these things comes from your gut. And of course, your gut, as we said, is your second brain. So it directly affects the rest of your health, whether it's your anxiety, whether it's your mental health, whether it's your physical health, whether it's your intelligence, all of these things comes from what you put in your body. We tend to know about 101 things that are bad for me. Yeah, I know this is bad for me. I eat it every day, but you know, what can I do? This is just having a weak nafs, a weak soul. You know it's bad for you. So why would you do that to yourself? Allah says in the Quran, And don't throw yourself to destruction. Why would you do that to yourself? Your nafs is an amana, and your nafs has a right upon you. Your soul has a right upon you, which is for you to take care of it. So take care of it and fix your health. And the last thing is your mindset. And there is no doubt that all of these things are linked. And to put it simply, if you are eating unhealthy food, it can affect your self-esteem. And of course, it can affect your sleep. When you are tired and not feeling good about yourself, it's harder to get things done. You know, this can lead to feelings of loneliness, sadness, depression, anxiety, and the list goes on just because of these small things. Remember, everything is in the details. How you do the small things is how you do everything. And how you do the, the small things will directly affect how you do the big things. But the good thing is you can break this cycle and make sure you have a good mindset. Make sure you, you think good of Allah and you have good thoughts of Allah. There is a hadith or an athar of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. He said, Wallahi alladhi la ilaha illa ghayruh ma u'tiya abdun mu'minun shay'an khayran min husni al-dhan billah. Wallahi la ilaha illa ghayru la yuhsinu abdun billahi al-dhan illa a'tahu Allah dhannahu. Thalika bi anna al-khayr fi yadih. Meaning if you, got, if you have good thoughts of Allah, for example, you want to learn the Arabic language and you think good of Allah, you think why would Allah not help me to learn the Arabic language? Why would Allah not make this path easier on me. Allah Azza wa Jal, He is the most adil. Allah is the most fair. So He wants you to worship Him. And you need to understand the Quran and the Sunnah to worship Him. So of course, Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنِ الذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ And we have indeed made the Quran easy to remember. So is there anyone that wants to remember it? And there is anyone that wants to learn it, apply it? Allah has made all of this easy. The deen is easy to understand, it's easy to apply. If it wasn't, Allah wouldn't be fair. Well, how is that possible? So if you have good thoughts of Allah, you won't have a bad mindset. You are going to be positive. Why would Allah not allow me to learn the Arabic language? Why would this be difficult? So as a result of that, you will stop having a negative self-talk. You will stop saying things like, man, this is so difficult. I don't know if I can do this. Man, uh, I'm not made for this. I don't think I can, I'm capable of this, you know? All of these are vocabulary words and sentences that comes from somebody that have a bad mindset. And this bad mindset comes from a naqs and a deficiency in how you should believe about Allah Azza wa Jal, how you should think and behave towards Allah Azza wa Jal. You should have good thoughts of Allah Azza wa Jal. And if you don't have good thoughts of Allah Azza wa Jal, your mindset will be messed up as a result of that. And if your mindset is messed up, you will have bad habits. And if you have bad habits, you will have a bad health. And if you have a bad health, guess what? You will lose in every realm in this life. So apply this in your life and you will see everything change. See you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum.